This is the Highly Sensitive Person Podcast, a weekly podcast for people who experience the world brighter, louder, and more intensely. Join me on a journey of acceptance of our highly sensitive person traits. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 43. I'm your host, Kelly. And today's episode is about highly sensitive men. I feel uncomfortable writing or talking about issues with which I don't have firsthand experience, like being a parent or an extrovert or a highly sensitive man. I want the things I talk about to be honest and sincere. So in these cases where I don't have firsthand experience, I ask other people for input. So for this show, I've asked several highly sensitive men for their stories and opinions. While this was intended to be all about highly sensitive men, as I read through the answers and put together my thoughts for the show, I found that much of this can apply to all HSPs. So why did I want to talk specifically about men? Well, there is the cultural expectation that women are more emotional and sensitive than men, that men should be tough and stoic, and these expectations could clash with the traits of being an HSP. This is going to be a two-part episode. Today I'm talking about the challenges of being a highly sensitive man, and next week I'll talk about how to deal with those challenges as well as the benefits and positives of being highly sensitive. So let's get started. First, I want to talk about the ways it can be difficult as a man to be highly sensitive. Peter, who's in his 50s, shared this story. As a boy, I will always remember the time when in second grade, something had happened in the classroom that resulted in me breaking down and crying. The teacher suggested I go to the boys' restroom to collect myself, which I gratefully did. About two minutes later, another classmate joined me and told me that the teacher had said that I was too sensitive. From that point forward, for decades, I felt as though sensitivity was a flaw, resulting in my adult years in my attempting to hide who I was to put my game face on in just about all of my business and many other interactions. This is such a powerful story because it perfectly shows how just one interaction in your youth can affect you for so many years. And it also illustrates how there's this difference between boys and girls. If he had been a little girl that started crying, don't you think it would have been less likely that the teacher would have commented about the student being too sensitive? It's normal for little girls to cry, but maybe not so much for little boys who are expected to be tough, right? Here's another story, this time from Fred in Sweden, who's in his 40s. He said, In senior high school, I and two boys were the only boys in a class. The rest were girls. Everyone else was loud, and a teacher nicknamed the class the hockey team because it was like entering a locker room. Being a sensitive male made it even more difficult to blend in. A common thread that runs through many of these men's answers to my questions was that they sometimes avoid certain situations where they know they may react emotionally and where they don't want other people to see that emotional reaction. They may also keep small social circles and avoid getting too close to people in case their true emotions come out. This is one of those cases where I can see how this would apply to both men and women. Matthew, who's in his 40s, wrote, I would say much of my history has been filled with trying to dull overwhelm. I have been able to detach from myself to varying degrees to make myself feel more or less normal. This is good and bad. When he first learned about highly sensitive people, Stephen, who's in his 30s, said he realized that much of his life up to that point had been about realizing the negative reactions of being highly sensitive and mitigating them to feel normal. So he would kind of push away his sensitivity, forcing those feelings to go away. He said, It's hard to dampen excitement, terror, and rapture, among other things, as the expectation is to remain more stoic as a man. It takes a lot more energy to be strong as a man if particular stimuli and events trigger those highly sensitive reactions. And here are some other comments about the challenges of being a highly sensitive male. Chris, who's in his 20s, said, while growing up, I sometimes felt inadequate and undervalued, since I didn't feel tough like the other guys. I also sometimes felt that others viewed me as less of a male and a less desirable relationship partner. I knew that I didn't like being tough and that that wasn't me, but it was still difficult to navigate my feelings. Llewellyn, who's in his 20s from Britain, says, There is a general reaction of get over yourself whenever I display any sort of behavior related to my high sensitivity, whereas I feel there would be more understanding and attempts to empathize if I were female. 
I certainly empathize with the struggles these men have described. How unfortunate that our culture takes little boys or little girls, men and women, who feel the world strongly and tells them that they're wrong, weird, or weak. And I feel bad for those young boys and girls who are made to feel that way at such an impressionable age. Here's a response to all those people who think the stereotypical real man can't be sensitive. A commenter on my blog named Gary wrote, I'm a former amateur boxer and judo competitor. I cry fairly easily, especially when I see TV ads depicting starving children or abused animals, etc. I've noticed many male UFC fighters who cry upon losing a match or feeling that they let their supporters down. These folks, including myself, are not sissies, I assure you. So those are some of the challenges and difficulties about being a highly sensitive man. Thanks to Peter, Freddie, Matthew, Chris, Stephen, and Llewellyn for helping me with this episode. Tune in next week when I'll be talking about how these men deal with being highly sensitive and what the positives and benefits are of being a highly sensitive man. Let me know what you thought of this episode at the show notes at highlysensitiveperson.net slash episode 43. And please take a moment to leave a positive review of this show on iTunes. It can help others discover this podcast, and I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to check out my book, A Highly Sensitive Person's Life, Stories and Tips for Those Who Experience the World Intensely. It's available on Amazon on paperback and for Kindle. It's a personal collection of essays about what it's like to be an HSP. Thanks so much for listening, and I look forward to catching up with you next week for part two. Have a good week. 